Hello folks, my name is Blue Digit, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Hellraiser 2022. Um, I've been taking a little bit to talk about this because I was debating if I even want to do like videos like this, but like, we're just going to throw the fish into the pond and see what happens. Um, so, I really like this, and um, if you just want a quick review, um, it's good, it's not the craziest thing in the world, but um, I do think it redefines the genre, go watch it. If you want something a little bit more, here you are. Um... Hellraiser and uh, remakes in general have been getting really bad rap lately, and it's understandable. Um, a lot of big license names like this are only getting movies just based off of uh, the safety that that franchise has. Um, you, you can see that with like Jurassic Park. That's not a horror movie, but like they milk the hell out of that. And now Chris Pratt is the voice actor for fucking everything. And I mean, I like Chris Pratt, but I mean, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't want his voice on fucking everything. I mean, he's just he's the most American motherfucker ever. So. Um, but, um, my point is a lot just get a bad rap because it feels really rushed and greedy and it doesn't actually feel like they're, um, reinventing the source material. One of the best examples of remakes, because remakes have been done well before, um, is the Dark Knight. Um, the Tim Burton version of Batman, right, was made. It was good, but, um, it didn't reach the heights until Christopher Nolan messed with this and then, um, the Dark Knight came out one of the best um, versions of the Joker ever. And ever since then, we've been getting very, very dark versions of that character, just like the comics. So um, that, that's what I mean by there are very good um, renditions of reworks. Um, however, when you get into the area of horror, especially, um, the, these remakes can seem very, um, almost like a slap in the face to what made the original so good. Um, because th there's so many levels behind what makes a horror movie, um, horrific. Um, and there's literally a chart I've seen where it's like, okay, you got tear, you got gore, you got suspense, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I'm not going to go into that because a lot of it is subjective. However, um, yeah, I would say it's a lot harder compared to like, if you're doing a new action movie, cause like in that sense, at least there's always something that you could improve on. And I would say it's a little bit easier as well. Um, but, um, I digress. When we go into Hellraiser, a lot of people were worried because um, they were going to change the lead actor. And um, if you guys don't know, dude, damn it, what was his name? Give me a second. Um, lead actor for Hellraiser. Not Clive Barker. He's the one that actually made the books that it was, um, there you go, Doug Bradley. He was in basically almost every single um, Hellraiser as Pinhead. And it, it, he's iconic. Like, quite literally, his, his voice lines are some of the most replayed voice lines in all of horror movie history. Um, because that's what makes really the character. Um, you open the box, I came. You know, that shit's badass. But, um, he didn't do the last few films, and it's understandable because, uh, well, they're, they're kind of dog water. <laughs> and they're just milking it. Um, so, when they came back, Hulu, basically saying, oh, we're going to do a Hellraiser, and it's going to be female lead, I don't think people were so angry that it was just not Doug Bradley doing Pinhead, but they are more mad that, okay, is this going to get political? Is this just going to be, oh, we, we need a female in this role because it's a female? And, um, I mean, fair enough. If you guys haven't seen She-Hulk, that's all I got to say, man. It's, 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 it's understandable. Um, I even have, like, these meme things where it's like, uh, what was it? Like, it, there, there's these memes where basically you have, like, actors that are, like, horrible for the role. And, like, they'll add them in there for, like, uh, the movie. Like, for example, like, my friend's on this thing where it's, like, um, Blah and Blah so is, uh, Elon Musk. And they have, like, a, like a, a black version of Elon Musk. Or <laughs> it's, like, you know, obviously that just, it, w it wouldn't work that well. Um, so, my point here is, um, uh, is this going to be offensive for the film? And, uh, I try to keep an open mind just because, like, I love horror in general. And I've always enjoyed um, seeing the aspects of each side of it. Because really, what, what horror is, is um, can your characters surpass an insurmountable about amount of adversity? And most of the time, it's a no. And that's what makes it interesting. Because when they do, or when they don't, or when, when you even have to understand what that adversity is, it, it makes the um, situation far more interesting than other series or shows. Because you can't really reach that point of tension. Especially if you try to in real life. You know, like you're just... You really kind of get one chance at that. So, um, with the new Hellraiser, though, I saw it, and surprisingly, it was amazing. It was beyond great. 
And I think a lot of people kind of just shrugged it off because not only did it go straight to Hulu, which, um, don't get me wrong, Hulu has made some bad decisions in the past, but, like, they've been making some bangers for remakes. Or at least, um, continuations of series. For example, the last one, Prey, for, uh, the Predators franchise, best one they did. It was sick. It was fucking badass. It was a cool idea where they actually made Predator back in, like, what, the uh, tribal ages? And it was, it was sick. So, um... I, I kind of wish those were the movies that were in theaters, because those are the movies that kind of need to be in theaters. Um, we'll get into that into another time. But, um, hell, raise, there we go. So, the lead actress, Jamie Clayton. Mmm, she did a great job. She did such a good job. Um, and the thing I, I really liked about this was she made the character actually terrifying and um, have character, which I'm not saying Bradley didn't. However, um, and it might be just due to the writing. Honestly, I can't tell, but I think that's also a good thing. That's how well he did this role. Um, that it, it makes me confused if the writing was the determining factor here. Um, however, what she did within the role was she made this pinhead a little bit more um, egotistical, I would say. And she actually does have her own um, desires that she wants to put forth as this, this entity. And, um, one thing, if you're, if you're looking into the, watching this film, is it's not as gory or bloody as the other ones, um, and a lot of people were kind of disappointed about that, but I, I didn't mind it at all, um, and I am an individual that I, I don't mind, and I actually do enjoy a little bit of blood and gore in my, um, horror movies, because I think it grounds the film a lot of the time, um, and it makes the audience realize, okay, shit's actually hitting the fan, um, even if it's goofy, like, like Terrifier, but, um, this film doesn't really do that nearly as much as the other Hellraisers, and don't wrong, Hellraiser is kind of set in this, like, um, extreme version of, like, sadomasochistic hell. That's the best way I can really describe it <laughs> in, like, a sentence, but, um, Hellraiser 2022 is the, the world build a lot better than the original, um, and they also do a very good job of setting up, um, terror within this setting, um, compared to the other films, where, um, the Cenobites really are not front stage, um, it's really more about, um, I would say this curse of the box, you could say, that that's, that's really what it was focused on, and the box is a big deal here, but the Cenobites are front stage, like, these are, like, the demons that you have summoned, and they're gonna come for you, and it's, it's terrifying, um, but it, they don't do, oh, we're just gonna rip your skin off, blah, 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 it, it feels a lot more, like, this is a blood pact that you made, and the film makes sure that you know that importance. Um, another thing that they did was um, a lot of the uh, cinema photography and the uh, costume direction was great. Um, and the other Hellraiser films, they made these characters have like black leather and all this shit. And like, again, it's cool. It looked really nice. And I still do enjoy that. Um, it kind of makes it look a little bit alien, but... I'll be real, dude. Again, it's it's like a sadomasochistic look. And this one, what they did was, it still has this disturbing sadomastic feel. However, the reason why it works is because they're it's all flesh. They they they're not wearing anything. It's just flesh. And um, before you get before you get your panties up in a in a rile, right? It's it's not like you can see anything. Like even that is like mutilated. Like their whole body is mutilated. And they did it in a way that actually looks like that's their costume. Because, I mean, technically it is, but, like, um, when, when you're watching the film, it's, like, literally their flesh, the way it's torn and mutilated, it looks like that's actually what their clothes are, and it's so, it's sick, it's badass. Um, they've done a wonderful job with that, and I'm really glad they went that direction, because it actually makes them feel like they're demons. It, it doesn't make them feel like they're, like, some kind of um, organization, like, uh, the last time. So, I enjoyed that. I also enjoyed how they made each character um, that was a Cenobite feel like, they had importance when they were after you, and there was a different um, threat because of that. Um, one thing that was also a guilty pleasure, I mean, uh, I, other people enjoyed it, but I, this is my just personal opinion. They actually added Chatterer back, and they actually made him do stuff that was important. Um, which, if, if you guys don't remember the other films, like, Chatterer just is kind of there. He doesn't actually do, like, a whole lot. But this one he does, and it's fucking awesome. Um, it, it, they brought forth the original characters, and the... Uh, Got some screen time for sure. Uh, and I think that's one thing that the original lacked. And this is where it gets a little bit debatable whether you're into it or not. The original um, 
was very much into body horror, and this one is as well, but uh, it, it kind of led up into a point where um, it was objective if this could have been avoided at all, and this is just a force of nature that's there. And this one, the moment you touch this box, these things are after you. These things do have a personality, and these things are um, biased and wanting to hurt you. And I think that does this film a service because, I mean, these, these are demons. These, these are fucking demons. These, these guys aren't going to be like, well, if you touch the box that way, oh no, man. Like, no, these things are going to be like, all right, let's rip you up. And that's exactly what they do. Um, and this is one thing that really, I think this is a determining factor to this. And um, the reason why I'm really recommending this film. The last one, um, you can kind of see where it's going. And it's, it's, again, it's a nice, um, it's a good film. And I do like the practical effects. I think, I think that's one practical effects were at its prime. Um, and I, I could, again, talk about practical effects over and over again, because it's one of my favorite um, types of effects. Um, it's not done as much anymore. And I, I get pissed off when I see things that could have been practical and they're CGI, especially when we have so much knowledge when it comes to knowing how to do practical effects. Um, however, what they did here uh, with the main character was kind of ballsy. And I'm, I'm just going to like tell you this now. Um, it's not really so much of a spoiler, but, um, you, you're going to hate her. You're, you're not going to like her. And if you do, I got some serious questions, but, um, the, the character is piss poor annoying. And the whole time I'm watching this, I'm wondering like, is this going to get any better? And I, I think I think my uh, my girlfriend was on the phone at the time, and I was like, "Look, okay, what, what the fuck's going on? Like, like, why is this so fucking annoying?" And um, as the film goes on, you start to realize that, like, unironically, it's supposed to be this way. And the way that the film wraps up, not spoiling that, but um, they do a really good job making you feel like, okay, there is reason behind that, and it's probably one of the first films in a long time where I actually accepted and I was really glad that the main character was an annoying piece of shit um, because it, it actually adds on to the film um, and the actor did a good job so the, the film not only kind of breaks barriers it goes against metaculture when it comes to horror movies where it's like instead of just being a dumb bitch and then there's like no point behind it at the end like, you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, those girls that, like, fumble their keys or, like, they make a dumb decision and kill off a friend when, like, there's there's no point to it. Like, this one, at the end, you understand why that comes to fruition. And um, that that's really good. Going back, though, um, I think this film honors the classic by caring more about the Clive Bar Barker um, original and staying grounded to the terror of what the box and Cinebites can offer compared to the latter half where it's like, okay, here's just a bunch of blood and, and gore. And, uh, we're, we're going to make you all depressed and you're strapped in hell. Like that it's, you know, you could, but it's just, it's kind of like, meh, you know, it's like, okay. Um, compared to what, what you see now. And I'm really glad, um, that's the way it went. Um, I'm going to say this one more time. Um, I love the lead actor. Um, and I loved Jamie Clayton. Uh, I think the lead actor, actors, oh, Odyssea, uh, Adias, uh, Azan? I'm probably not saying that right, but, um, basically, they both did amazing, but Jamie Clayton, the way she voices Pinhead, um, and that's one thing you had to be really careful of, because this is an iconic character, she did so well, and it didn't make me at all think, um, this is a, you know, a different girl doing the, the role, what I'm thinking is, this is fucking Pinhead, and she has this very raspy, like, you open the back, da, 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 da. and it was just crazy and um i thought all of it was like edited but like the way she spoke in interviews too like she you can tell like this was really well voice acted so um if there's more films with her in it i'd be more than happy because um it honors the original it does a very good job pulling it all together and it doesn't feel like this is just another scrap like if you didn't know um the other films you could watch this and you would get probably just as much information, if not more, and also maybe more enjoyment than the originals. And that's, that's a very important thing. Um, and I'm really glad to say that because with remakes nowadays, 
it really is, you know, a, a toss. It's it's a toss up, and um, it's kind of sad that's the way it went. But maybe this is one of those that um is the turning point. So um, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you are to watch it, I give it like a seven, maybe an eight out of ten. Um, I would only say that just because I mean. It's good for what I had to work with. However, this world itself still has a little bit like blandness in comparison to the depths I think it go uh, could go, and um, that's just the Hellraiser franchise in general for me. Um, but I still I still like it, and it is one of those things that if you're gonna watch for Halloween, it's it's good. But you have to immerse yourself. It's not it's not one of those movies that um, is just gonna be blood guts. Oh ah, you're right. It's you are gonna have to ground yourself in the film, and if you're okay with that. You're probably going to like this a lot. Um, so, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, my name is Bloody Sunny Out, and uh, I'll see you all guys next video. Bye, guys.